Hi, I'm Elizabeth. This is The Bookish North and I'm here today with another weekly reading video. Um, I'm back home in Norway. A bit sad about that, I'm not gonna lie. But give me a few days and I'll adjust. I'm just sad that I can't spend all days lounging in parks reading books or visiting bookshops anymore. But, you know, that's life. Um, it wouldn't be great if it was all the time. Probably. Um, let's get to the books I've been reading. I did have a good reading week this week. It was a short reading week just because I included Monday and Tuesday in last week's video. So the week kind of started on Wednesday for the sake of this video at least. But I did manage to finish four books so that's good. Um, first of which was After Atlas by Emma Newman. I mean, on the first day of my holiday, I finished off Planetfall, which is the first book in this series. Really enjoyed that and wanted more, so I bought this. And uh, I was kind of surprised at how different this was to Planetfall, because I knew that the books were sort of, that you could read them out of order and that they didn't really follow each other uh, storyline-wise, that they took place in a different setting. Uh, but just the story itself, the kind of story this was, surprised me because it was very different. So the first one, Planetfall, takes place on another planet where a few humans have travelled from Earth and set up a colony. Uh, this book takes place about 40 years after that um, and, well, 40 years after they left Earth, uh, more likely, and this takes place on Earth and it's about the people who remained when this this um, what's it called this huge spaceship took off with a thousand people on it to go find God on a different planet. Uh, so this is about the humans who remained on Earth. Uh, and what surprised me is that this is uh, a murder mystery set in a sci-fi setting. And I don't normally read murder mysteries and I was a bit apprehensive when I realized that that was what this was. But then I got just completely immersed in the story and I couldn't put it down and I loved it very much. I mean, I I really literally couldn't put it down. So one day I was very late at going out of the apartment I had just because uh, I couldn't stop long enough to get myself from the apartment to a park to finish it. Finished it before I went out and read something else in the park. Um, but yeah, really engaging story. Uh, it's about a very profiled person being murdered and you have uh, the main character who is called Carlos Moreno who is the son of one of the people who took off on uh, that... Uh, that what's it called? Generation ship, I think it's called. Um, yeah, and um, it, it was uh, a very good story. It was, I mean, exciting, this solving of the murder thing, even though I thought that wouldn't interest me as much. Turned out it did, but uh, more than that, it sort of, it switches gear uh, like a bit over halfway through and it goes into this store, bigger storyline and it's connecting more to the other uh, book as well. And uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed this so much that if you've seen my haul from yesterday, you know that I've already bought the third book in the series called Before Mars. So that just very well might be my next pick uh, for what I'm reading next. Then the next book I decided to pick up was Skating to Antarctica by Jenny Diski. And this is a non-fiction book. It's marked or labeled as a memoir. It is a memoir. It's also a travel log because Jenny Diski has gets this idea in her head that she wants to go to Antarctica to see the ice. Uh, she wants a world that's white or as white as possible and it seems to her that Antarctica is the perfect place to go. It proves it's a hard place to get to because you can't just go there, you have to have a reason for going there and you have to apply and blah blah blah. Uh, she ends up uh, getting a 
place at a cruise ship that's going there uh, and also through some other places. But interwoven with this, she also tells the story about her own life, her own um, childhood, uh, her relationship to her parents, most of all to her mother. She's trying to dig down into that as well. She had a very problematic um, relationship to her mother. She lost touch with her in 1966 and uh, throughout this book she finds out some things about what happened to her mother after that uh, but also she explains why she didn't really want to keep in touch with her mother. Um, I really like this. I have previously read In Gratitude by Jenny Diski, which is another memoir, and one she wrote when she was on her deathbed. And I have to admit that for me the interest in Jenny Diski started with that book, because in that book she for the first time wrote about her relationship to Doris Lessing, which for a time was her foster mother. And I mean Lessing is briefly mentioned twice in this book as well, but, but not by name. She's only mentioned as the woman who took me in. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was kind of weird having read these books in the order I read them, partly because of that, because I knew more of that dynamic than she is willing to let shine through in this book, partly because this is probably mostly about her mother, so she didn't want to go into another problematic relationship with the female authority figure, I guess. Uh, but also, uh, there are some parts in this when she talks about stuff, planning for her old age, which was kind of heartbreaking because I knew through the other book that she never really got to old age because she passed away from cancer uh, earlier on. Uh, but yeah, this was well worth my time. I really enjoyed this. Uh, I like her writing. I really recognize myself in a lot of the things she's writing about, uh, when she writes about traveling alone, and when she writes about liking to uh, stay put and not move around, uh, about the need for solitude. There's a lot of things in here that resonates with me as well. So yeah, this was another great read for me. Uh, you might want to check it out if you're into that kind of writing. So yesterday I read a book in one sitting for the first time in a very, very long time. Uh, I mean, it was a tiny book, so it wasn't that big of an accomplishment, but still, uh, it was A Small Place by Jamaica Kincaid. And this was a powerful read. It's an essay, originally written as a letter to her publisher in The New Yorker. And he wanted to publish it in The New Yorker, and uh, right before he was going to, he was sacked and the new editor thought that this was too angry to be in the New Yorker. People wouldn't be interested in reading it. And eventually it turned into a book published in its own right instead. This is a new release of the, the essay with a new foreword written by the author in 2018. And I mean, I can see why they would call this angry because she certainly is angry in this, uh, but it's a justifiable anger. I have no problem understanding why she's angry. Uh, so this is written in U form. It's written to a tourist, uh, telling them when you come to Antigua, which is where she was born and grew up, when you come to Antigua, this is what you see. And then she goes behind that and shows you all of the things you don't see and all the things you as a tourist don't know uh, and will never know and don't want to know because you will be there for a week or 10 days or a fortnight to just relax and enjoy yourself and you want the weather to be sunny and perfect all day and you don't really think about how that will affect the people living there and how the eternal sunshine makes it hard to grow things and how everything in society does not necessarily work because you don't see the bad parts of the society when you're there as a tourist. And I mean this was a powerful read. Uh, it's uh, 
a hard book to read because because of her anger because a lot of her anger is geared towards me as a white European person uh, as someone who on a regular basis is a tourist uh, and I'm very much I mean guilty of a lot of the things uh, she accuses people of in this book. I just came home from a holiday yesterday. I was a tourist today. I am no longer a tourist. I'm in my own hometown, in my own home country uh, and uh, no longer the, <laughs> the um, recipient of the rage against tourists but you, you know it, it was a good time to read this book uh, and I think it's a valid not valid it, it's a good counterpoint to have with you um, and uh, it gives me it gave me something to think about so I'm very very glad I picked this up and read it and uh, I think it's a very good uh, it's a very good essay basically and then the final thing I finished off uh, was Feeble Minded by Ariana Harwich which I mentioned uh, last week as well. This is translated from the Spanish by Annie McDermott and Carolina Orloff. And um, I did not particularly like this book. Um, I was very hesitant about it last week, said I understood absolutely nothing. I will say it got better. I ended up liking it more than I did last time I felt the beginning made absolutely no sense to me at all I didn't I wasn't just I just wasn't able to connect uh, the sentences and the words on the page into like one coherent story or anything just making sense at all because it was just a lot of random images piled on top of each other and I just couldn't make sense of them and that got better and in the end it it does evolve into a sort of cohesive narrative I, I get I mean it's still a lot of random images but I understood what was going on and could follow sort of the development uh, until a fairly dramatic end so so it got better and I got more out of it than I feared I would in the beginning of it. But I still think that all this just massive piling on of imagery didn't work for me at all. Uh, I think for me it's a thing about when I, when I read a book, what I look for in language is to be surprised by language, by someone being so precise in their description of something that it makes me see that thing in a new way or it makes me think, yes, that is exactly what it's like. I've never seen anyone describe it like that before. That description made sense to me. Those sentences uh, are what I read for. Uh, but in here, it felt like the images just didn't make any sense. I could not picture what they were saying uh, and because of that the words just didn't stick in my mind it made uh, that was made it hard for me to make sense of it because the the pictures all the it just seemed random it didn't paint any kinds of pictures in my head I couldn't see what she was trying to show me and so this just was a hit and miss for me I'm afraid um, I'm gonna give this on to Celia who also really wants to read it so Celia you can have my copy and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it more than I did and so those were the books I finished off this week I am happy with this reading week both because I finished like four books which is a lot for me in a week granted two of them were fairly short but still uh, and then I also really liked three out of four books I finished so that's probably the most important thing uh, that I really enjoyed what I was reading um, and uh, yeah I'm curious about how my reading weeks will be going forward because I'm going back to work well today yeah, I'm filming this on Sunday but I'm posting it on Monday so today I will be back at work and I think I will be having some very very busy days going forward uh, because uh, 
I have a lot of writing to do for work now and uh, I'm not sure how much reading I'm going to be able to cram into my brain. Uh, so that remains to be seen, but hopefully I will have some new books to talk to you about next week in my next weekly reading video. And until then, bye bye. Hope you're all having a great week.